Hey folks, Max Lee Tune, welcome back to another tryout. Today's tryout is on Castlevania Requiem. If you don't know what that is, Castlevania Requiem is a two-game combo pack of Rondo of Blood and Symphony of the Night. Two, uh, I don't know what to call them, classic, I guess, Castlevania games. I don't believe Rondo of Blood has been released very often in the West. It might, I don't know if this is the first time, but it's a game that was sort of Japan only for a while, at least. And then Symphony of the Night is a classic that just about everyone knows about because it's one half of the reason why the genre is called metroidvania pretty much these are two games that i got this physical copy through limited run games a while ago they, they were doing a physical copy of this and i was like sure i want uh, a physical copy of symphony of the night and i don't want to buy it on original hardware or anything and it's not a game that's been released that many times after you know being on the PlayStation 1. There's the Xbox Live Arcade version, and then there's this version. And I technically have both of them. I played each of these games for like about 45 minutes to an hour, and I'm gonna talk about them. This game was in my PS5 for a little bit, and then uh, this came out, and uh, now it's uh, not in the PlayStation 5 anymore. It's uh, in that case, uh, and Spider-Man is in the PlayStation 5. But today, we're talking about this and not Spider-Man, because we'll talk about Spider-Man once New Game Plus gets added and I play through New Game Plus, like I did for the other ones. I'll do, because I'm I'm a shill for myself, card for my uh, uh, Spider-Man 1, Spider-Man 2018, and then uh, let's do a second card for my Miles Morales video. Go watch those after this is done, or before, come back, I don't care. Anyway, let's get to talking about the games that this video is about. For a long time, lebten the people happy and zufrieden. Niemand bemerkte den Schatten, der sich langsam über ihnen ausbreitete. First off uh, is Rondo of Blood, which is the older of the two games and is like, if I remember the Castlevania lore correctly, which I don't, the end or the beginning of Symphony of the Night it's playing off of like the end of Rondo of Blood in some capacity, or at least like that's the time period when that game's start is set. I don't know all of the details on Castlevania lore, even though I've watched a video that told me all of it at one point, but that's the, the gist. Rondo of Blood is a classic style Castlevania game. It plays very similarly to like the original Castlevania and it's you can very much compare it to it because the first like actual level is pretty close to or at least has a lot of the same visual spaces as the original Castlevania's beginning and it's very intentional I'm assuming parallels there. I personally am pretty not great at the classic style Castlevania games. I uh struggle with them a little bit. I have on Switch the uh, Anniversary Collection. I think I only have Anniversary Collection right now, which is like the old like NES GBA games, and I've not thus far beaten any of them because I'm bad at them. The music in Rondo of Blood makes up for that a little bit. Like, listening to this particular arrangement of Vampire Killer, I, it, it makes it hard to be too upset that I keep dying in this mission and having to start over because I just get to listen to this song longer and that's great I like vampire killer so I don't mind it that much but I was kind of like I don't know what I'm you know how I'm gonna do this and then I found a key and then I found where the key went and on another life I got the key and took it to the locked door and inside I found Marie Renard like huh okay cool whatever and then I keep going, and then I die. And, you know, game over. And there, at the bottom of the game over screen this time, it says, change character. And I'm like, huh. And so I switch, and I play as Maria, Maria Menard. And I have a little bit of an easier time getting through stuff. And so it's like, Okay, if this is how the game is going, and we go through, we play levels, and we unlock new characters, and I can switch to them, I might be able to make it through this. I'm very interested to see, like, what other characters could be in here, and what other characters they might do, and whatever. I'm intrigued now. You, you've kind of pulled me in. Uh, you've, you've shown me the sort of, like, twist that this has. It's not just classic style Castlevania. 
it's got these other bits, which I don't, they might be in other Castlevania games. I've not really played that many of them. I'm not like, I, I'm interested in Castlevania, but I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm like a giant fan and to the point where like I actually know things about Castlevania, but this pulled me in to make me really interested in seeing where Rondo of Blood goes and what it does with its stuff that it's kind of setting up here. I don't know if I'll finish it personally. It kind of feels like one of those games that I might not actually be able to get through at the end of the day uh, because I'm just not great at some of like the older NES style games. But that's okay. I'm interested in at least checking out it more and seeing where it goes and seeing what it does. With that, I'd say it passes. I don't know. I guess I'm doing individual pass fails for each game here. Uh, so I guess it passes its tryout there. But now we'll talk about the other game in this do combo pack. Dracula, die now and leave this world. You'll never belong here. Oh. But this world invited me. Your own kind called me forth with praise and tribute. Tribute? You're a thief. You steal men's souls, their freedom. Freedom is always sacrificed to faith, good hunter. Or are you truly here by choice? All I'm here for is you. To hell with your heresy! You're nothing but a blight on mankind. Ha! Mankind. A cesspit of hatred and lies. Fight for them, then, and die for their sins. Castlevania Symphony Night, as I mentioned, is like a classic, iconic, whatever you want to call it, game. A lot of people know it. A lot of people are like, it's the best game of all time or whatever, I'm sure. I originally tried to play this via that Xbox Live Arcade version that I mentioned a long time ago. But something about the menus, like not the in-game menus, but the menus to sort of get to that game, I didn't like them. I don't really remember. I can throw some footage on screen I believe I have to, you know, showcase what it looked like and whatever. I didn't particularly like the, the menus on that and the UI. And so I was like, I'll just wait for it to come to a more modern platform and play it there. And so I did, and, you know, this game was an innovator in its genre. Like I said, there's a reason why the genre is called Metroidvania, and it is because of Symphony of the Night. Before Symphony of the Night, I believe, like, these weren't mechanics that were there. These were mechanics that were borrowed from, like, the Metroid games and stuff to build into this bigger, more comprehensive concept that, you know, you can really feel playing Symphony of the Night. Playing Symphony of the Night still feels relatively fresh to play. Like, this doesn't feel like a super old game. It's kind of reminding me of playing Super Metroid when I played Super Metroid. Do I have a... That, that's in a video. They'll put the card to whatever that is. It's in a video, too. I remember playing that, that and it being just, like, a really good, like, and a game that's aged really well, and I feel like Overall, that's the case here. There are some things like the old uh, like RPG style menu stuff in the pause menu that might not feel as great going all the way through. I don't know, I've not messed with them too much. They just kind of look a little dated, but like overall, there's like the actual moment to moment gameplay still feels really fresh and doesn't feel like super dated. I don't feel like I got that far in my like 45 minutes to an hour of playing. I definitely was making progress. I do believe when I left off, I had died and like lost some progress because I died. That's how these older style games work with like saves and junk. But I know that I'm going forward. I just don't feel like I'm making great progress through my playtime so far. That's in part because I think that a lot of these sort of older Metroidvania games, you don't necessarily need to play with a walkthrough, but you're benefited by playing with a bit of a walkthrough to sort of give you an idea of where you're supposed to go and what you're supposed to be doing that the game doesn't necessarily give you super directly. But that's sort of my opinion on that. And this isn't really a bad thing. It's just like, I don't feel like I got very far in this game. This game feels like it's probably pretty long. My last point is a kind of negative, more like a joke than a negative, but really it's just like, Symphony of the Night has an iconic scene at the very beginning. Die, monster. You don't belong in this world. It was not by my hand that I'm once again given flesh. 
I was called here by humans who wish to pay me tribute. Tribute? You steal men's souls and make them your slaves. Perhaps the same could be said of all religions. Your words are as empty as your soul. Mankind ill needs a savior such as you. What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets. But enough talk. Have at you. This version is one of the versions with the sort of updated, uh, retranslated dialogue. And while I think like the dialogue is like technically better and the performances are technically better, there's just something about die monster. You don't belong of this world. That is just. That's what I want to hear. I don't want you to change that. If you get different voice actors to revoice it, that's fine. But I just want to hear that dialogue. Because it's it's iconic. I think it's fine. Like, it's a little, like, cheesy. A little silly. But when it's dr- you're talking with Dracula, you know? I don't think it's a problem to be a little cheesy. So... It's not like a big negative, but it is something to take note of that like you're getting different English dialogue. There's an entirely different English dialogue in this version. So like that's I something to note. I still would say that the game passes tryout though. It's you know it's Symphony of the Night. I really need to play more of it to get um, uh you know a more of a idea of what the game is like. But as a first impression, I'd say it definitely passes tryout. I will get back to it someday once I finish, uh, you know, this thing down here. I'll probably get back to it someday, maybe. I don't know. I have a couple notes for, like, the package overall. My first note here is that, like, the game's UI for, like, choosing between the two games, it's really cheap looking, uh, especially compared to at least the other Konami Castlevania collection I have experience with, which is the Castlevania Anniversary Collection, I think is what it was called, on the, which I have on the Switch. I can put up some footage to like, I think like comparatively, like the, that menu is so much like nicer looking. And it's weird that this one is such like, so cheap feeling comparatively, even though this is like an older collection, it's just sort of like, it's not a great menu. And luckily you don't really have to interact with it otherwise, but it's like, come on, that that's not a good menu. Uh, But I do think that this package is a good pickup if you want to play these two games and, you know, you have a PS4 or a PS5. Not necessarily this physical, because it's limited run and you probably costs too much, but I believe this package is available digitally, so probably pick it up like that if, if you're going to. Uh, I'd say it, it passes this tryout. And with that, I gotta be a PNG again for a second here because uh, I'm gonna announce the thing. I don't know if you keep up with my Twitter or my YouTube community post stuff, but this video got delayed like a little over a week and some of the other recent videos have been delayed this month. And I really just, I think I'm underestimating my severe burnout because I've been doing stuff nonstop for a long time. And that includes this show which I've been doing practically nonstop, not exactly nonstop for uh, what are we on season four? So like a little over three years or three and a half years. And I need to take better care of myself and step away again, despite just having that break in September. But that break in September wasn't really a break because I didn't finish the video leading into that break. And thus, like I was working on that video throughout that break. So hopefully we'll put this video out and then I won't make any videos for the rest of November 2023. And then we will be back to tryouts with the rest of my Halloween schedule that I had set out on December 6th, 2023. So that's it. Back to the video. Check out Castlevania Requiem. If you're interested in Castlevania, in particular, Ronda Own Blood and Symphony of the Night. That's really all I had to say about these games. So 
Let's uh, get to the end of it. So if you're on the description at beacons.ai link, they'll take you to all my places, my Patreon, Bandcamp, Redbubble, etc. Click those links, go to those places, and do what you do there. Like the video if you liked this, like if you didn't subscribe, and keep up with this and other shows. Working on uh, some other things, like I said, there'll be a wrap-up on Spider-Man 2 someday, after New Game Plus happens, uh, gets added. So keep an eye out for stuff like that coming in the future. Uh, leave a comment. Have you played? What's your favorite Castlevania game? Uh, what's your, what's your thoughts on this dual pack package if you've played it? Or your thoughts on the Xbox 360 port of Symphony of the Night? Any of those things? Leave a comment. Share the video. Do the things. Do the things. Thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye.